Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion. For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have the stewardship entrusted to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, though not being without law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may be, that I may by all means save some. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. This is the word of God for the people of God. She's just training for a race, Carlin. That's all. So as we read in our scripture today, we find Paul writing to the church in Corinth. And Corinth was located in what today would be southern Greece, about 40 miles west of Athens. And at this time that he's writing, much like the rest of the world, it was under Roman rule. The church in Corinth was made up of a few Jews but was primarily made up of Gentiles. Now, when we find Paul writing to the church, he's trying to explain to them how he's been able to spread the gospel. You see, Paul was really good at finding ways of connecting with all those that he came in contact with. He would look for ways in which they, he was similar to them, and he would try to approach them from the common ground that he could share with them. Now, Paul had some advantages going for him, and he was not afraid to use those advantages. See, Paul was a Jew. He wasn't just a Jew, but he was a Jew of high standing. Before his conversion, he had been entrusted to hunting down and imprisoning people that were following Christ. And he didn't do this just because he was a mean person. He did it because that's what he thought God wanted from him. Now, Paul was also a citizen of Rome. And he would use that to his advantage whenever he would get in trouble with Jewish authorities. If he was arrested by them, he would say to them, you know, I see your point. I get why you're upset with me. But before you choose to punish me, you might want to know I'm a citizen of Rome. And that would cause those authorities to think, ooh, I don't know if we should go ahead and punish him or turn him over to the Romans. See, he goes into more detail in our scripture that we're talking about. He goes over and talks about everything he's tried and how he's tried to become everything to everyone so that he meets with them in order to spread the gospel. But what is he really talking about here? Is he saying that he constantly changes who he is or he constantly changes what he believes in order to please people so that he can take the gospel to them? Well, yes and no. You see, he's not willing to compromise on the things that are truly important, like spreading the gospel, but he is willing to do something that many of us struggle with today, and that is to adopt the strategy of empathy when meeting new people. You see, Paul is willing to listen and to try and understand the people that he meets. And he's not doing this so that he can be changed, but he's doing it so that he can change others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in our modern world, empathy is sometimes looked down upon. You see, empathy is sometimes looked as weakness. It's often, empathy can be often viewed as agreement. And it's often viewed as someone who is unwilling to stand on a principle. But brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you today, that is not what empathy is truly about. You see, empathy is defined as the ability to understand 
and share the feelings of another. Well, pastor, you might be thinking, are you talking, you're talking about feelings right off the bat, and you're getting all warm and squishy on us. And perhaps what I say today may strike you that way, and that's okay if it does. But I think it's important for us to understand something about empathy as well. You see, empathy is not the same thing as sympathy. Sympathy is feeling bad for someone in the situation that they find themselves in. You can be understanding of someone. You can try to connect with them on their level and have empathy. At the same time, you can do that without feeling sorry for that person. However, the fact remains, if we're going to work finding ways to, got, to take the gospel to people, we have to find ways to have empathy for them. I want you to try to think of it this way. Have you ever tried to have a conversation with someone and you don't speak the same language? It can be very frustrating to communicate the most simple of ideas when there is no common language between the two of you. Now, you might get by with hand signals or partially understood phrases, but in the end, chances are you haven't understood that person and they haven't understood you. You see, in our world today, we've moved past, we've moved to the point where we are refusing to try and understand people that think differently from us. We've moved into this position of, I am right, you are wrong, and to think any differently than me makes you an idiot. So, brothers and sisters, what have you found to be the one thing that is dividing us the most right now? Well, for me, I will tell you that I have found it to be politics. Now, I need you to know this. This isn't going to be here the here we go moment in my ministry. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you which way you should vote or which candidates you should support. That is for you to decide. However, I have sat back over the past few years and especially in this last year, and to me I've seen how far politics have divided us from one another. And I know that this can be a sensitive topic for people, but I don't think I would be doing my job. And I don't think I would be being honest to my ministry if I don't at least address part of this. Now, I know that it has been hard for people to find common ground politically these days because we do seem to be so far apart on so many different things. But I am here to say we must try to find empathy for others, no matter what their political ideals are. We are held to that higher standard by Jesus. And you may be saying to yourselves right now, Pastor, there is no way that I can do that. They are so far away from what I believe is right. I cannot possibly begin to understand the way that they think. But I'm here to tell you this. We are not called to take the gospel only to liberals. And we are not called to take the gospel only to conservatives. We are called to take the gospel to all people. If we're going to do so effectively, then we must be like Paul and become all things to all people. See, we have to find a way to connect with them. And that starts with empathy. Have you ever had the experience where you come across someone and they must be having the worst day of their life? And then they decide to take that out on you. Now, I am a firm believer that every person should have to work at least a month in customer service or as a waiter in their life. <laughs> and then you can really learn what it is to deal with difficult people. I've had the pleasure of working in retail on several Black Fridays throughout my life, and I don't know what it is about that day, but boy, it sure brings out the worst in some people. And I worked as a tool salesman for Sears while I was going to college. And I cannot begin to tell you how many people came in and yelled at me about tools that had broken or some of the signs being wrong in the store. And as a result of working in that job and a few others, I have found myself to be pretty patient when it comes to salespeople and waiters. Now, Carlin will tell you 
that you pretty much have to bring me the wrong food. It has to be cold when it arrives at my table. And I have to uh, see you never come back and refill my drink order in order for me not to give someone a good tip. And this is because I know the people have probably dealt with so many grumpy people that day, and I just can't be another one. You see, I have empathy for them because of my own experiences. Now, I want to say this as well. If you find that you have a problem offering empathy to someone, if you feel as though you can't even possibly begin to try and understand other people, then I would counter with this idea. You can still offer them grace. You can offer them the same, the same thing that God has offered to you. You see, empathy and grace are not saying that you agree with them. It's not saying that you condone the things that they may be doing. But it is a way that you can connect with them so that you can work to try and bring them into the body of Christ. Often as Christians, we like to believe that we are standing on the moral high ground when we have an argument with someone. And while that may well be true, I want you to think about what the moral high ground means for us. You see, we feel that we are there because we are trying to live the lives that are defined by what Christ has asked us to do with our lives. But ask yourself this question. Do you think Christ would want you to stand on the moral high ground and do nothing but shout down at the people that are below you about how they are sinning and how they are wrong? Or do you think Jesus wants you to be on that high ground, reaching down to others to bring them up with you? For me, the answer is pretty simple. You see, I'm one of those people, I hope and pray that God views me this way, reaching down to the others to try to pull them up because I have already been pulled up by Jesus. And he wants me to reach down and pull as many people up to that moral high ground with me as, he can, as I can. And finally, you might be thinking, and this is understandable that you would feel this way, why would I even bother? I know they are just going to reject me, and I know they are just going to reject the gospel message. They are too far down that path. And what they're doing is something that I view as so wrong, there is nothing I can do for them. But ask yourself this. What if God took that view with us? You see, their sins are no greater than your sins or my sins. And we know that from the Bible, God views all sin the same. So if God is willing to offer you grace and forgiveness, if he's willing to offer me grace and forgiveness, shouldn't we be willing to offer grace and forgiveness to others? You see, we are all God's children. And he loves those people the same way that he loves you. And wouldn't it be wonderful to offer them the same kind of empathy that God offers for us? Now, if you still aren't convinced that this is the path that we should be seeking, if you still don't think that you're capable of doing this, then I will leave you with this thought to ponder. Jesus Christ went willingly to the cross to be tortured and to be killed so that you and that I and that everyone else can be freed of their sins and have life eternal. Don't you think that we can find a way to try and understand others so that we can bring them into the body of Christ? Isn't it worth putting aside our own pride to share the gospel with them? Isn't that the least that we can do for Christ who has done so much for us? My challenges for you this week are to get a little bit introspective with your own life. What is something that people do that you just can't stand or something that you feel is a sin that cannot be forgiven? And then I challenge you to look into scripture and find what Jesus has to say about it. Not what I have to say about it. Not what you feel about it. Not what your cousin's uncle's sister-in-law says about it, but what Jesus says about it. And then I want you all to take the time this week and read Matthew 22, 
verse 36 to 40. Amen.